I might be a little biased, but Southern Indiana is one of the best places for an all-day road trip. Beautiful scenery, nice people, and tons of absolutely free roadside attractions. This is the place where memories are made. Starting at Greensburg and ending at Vincennes, this is quite the adventure. So grab a snack, your favorite drink, and let's hit the road. If you're coming from Indianapolis, this is a great first stop. The legendary Decatur County Courthouse at Greensburg, Indiana. Built in 1861 for the scandalous price of $100,000. In the early 1870s, someone noticed a tree growing from the roof. No one knows how it got there, but birds are strongly suspected. Over time, a total of four trees were growing up there. In case you were wondering, Purdue University identified it as a mulberry tree. If you have a very tall ladder, you're welcome to prove them wrong. Heading south to Versailles, we find Paul Hinge, closely resembling Stonehenge, or even the strange structures of Coral Castle. Paul Hinge was created by Paul Morris in 2015. It's correctly aligned to annual equinoxes and solstices, and really took some planning. Not to mention, cranes to move these massive stones. The current owner thought about tearing it down, but he was afraid he'd disrupt the order of the universe. Given how things are going, leaving it alone isn't such a bad idea. High atop Browning Mountain at Elkinsville is another intriguing structure, but in this case, no one knows who built it. Found by settlers as early as the 1700s, it's been described as the Hoosier Stonehenge. There are quarried limestone blocks arranged in a circle. And laying on their sides are what look like immense columns. Some have noted that this type of limestone is from a quarry 30 miles away. How it got here is a mystery. While some say that glaciers moved the stones, others say it was ancient people. But take it from me, it's no mystery how much of a workout it is to get to the top. Just outside Nashville, on your way to the T.C. Steel Museum, is the Sock Barn. This is the answer to Milltown's shoe tree, with all kinds of socks, attached to the side of the barn. Because, well, why not? Who knows, you might find the one you're missing from the dryer. At Bloomington, Indiana is an exotic place. Nestled in the woods is a place that looks like Tibet, but you need neither passport or bonus miles to get there. Known as the Tibetan Mongolian Buddhist Cultural Center, it's a series of exotic monuments and buildings. Open to the public, it's in a park like setting with walking trails.
formal tours are given on weekends. Check their website for details. Traveling to Williams, Indiana, you get two roadside attractions. The first is Williams Dam. Built as part of an early hydroelectric dam, it's now a favorite place for fishing. Serene at low water. Violent and impressive after a storm. Always, always smells like fish. Just down the road is the Williams Cover Bridge, built in 1884. At 402 feet long, it's the longest double span covered bridge in Indiana. It's a great place just to walk and clear your mind. Southwest of Williams at Mitchell, Indiana is the largest limestone rocket in the world. The hometown of astronaut Gus Grissom, it was built on the site of his former elementary school. It's complete with thrusters and a command unit on the top. This thing is 44 feet tall, a whopping 28 tons, and took 15 years to build. If you have waterproof boots and can do some hiking, Tazewell, Indiana has something really remarkable. Hidden about 17 minutes into the woods is a rare Indiana arch. A part of the Yellow Birch Ravine, the Tazewell Arch is about 25 feet across and 16 feet high. While fairly common in Kentucky, I know of only four in Indiana, and this one is the most impressive. As a bonus, there's a cave to the right. There's quite a few others in the area, but if you are not trained in caving, take a respectful peek and don't do any exploring. Some Indiana caves have drops over 100 feet straight down. One of the most beautiful panoramas in the state is at Leavenworth. Simply known as the Overlook or Horseshoe Bend, it's an awesome view of the Ohio River. On the opposite bank is Battletown, Kentucky. Best of all, a parking lot overlooks the entire valley. No hiking is involved. Anyone can enjoy this great view. West of Leavenworth at St. Croix, is a hidden gem. Just across from this parking lot, and not marked at all, is a prehistoric site. To see it, you'll have to cross a creek and go up a small ravine. Known as the Potts Creek Rock Shelter, this is where ancient people once lived. Artifacts have been found all over this area. This place is absolutely calming. Located at Bristol, Indiana, is St. Joseph's Holy Family at God's Country. Part Catholic education and Stations of the Cross, it's also a remarkable hike into beautiful rocky ravines. If you take time to read, you'll gain quite an education. And at every station, a poignant spike. Before descending into the ravine, there's a chapel. In 
looking below a beautiful pond. There are several ways down, but the tight and narrow one is the most interesting. High above the valley, the hill of Golgotha is recreated. There are places to sit and reflect in this quiet corner of Indiana. On the far other end of the grounds is a spring. And a recreation of the tomb where Christ was laid after the crucifixion. Whether you're religious or not, this is a worthy and interesting stop. If you love architecture, You'll love the Monte Cassino Shrine at Ferdinand, Indiana. High above a hill, it looks deceptively small from the outside. But inside is simply amazing. Built in 1870, the door is always open. And if you're looking for a quiet moment, you'll find it here. Just down the road is St. Meinrad, the only arch abbey in America. Established in 1854, it was designed to educate Catholic clergy. It's every bit as amazing as buildings in Europe. While they haven't resumed tours since the pandemic, you can get a map at the gift shop, visitor center, or from their website to do a self-guided tour. Traveling across country, but also in Ferdinand, is the Monastery Immaculate Conception. Completed in 1888, with additions continuing until 1924, the free tour is outstanding. The first time I dropped by, I was invited to an evening service by a gracious little nun. After it was over, she took me on the complete tour. It was a wonderful experience I'll never forget.
Going south across Highway 64 will take you to Santa Claus, Indiana and the amazing Santa Claus Christmas store. The displays inside are like something from Disney World. Each year, I visit around the Christmas season to get in the spirit of things. But for people that love Christmas all year round, the store is open May through December. Southeast of town is the original Santa Claus Post Office. Built in 1856, this small post office receives every letter sent to Santa Claus from around the entire world and every child's letter is personally answered. If you like, you can write a letter to Santa right here. On the same grounds as the historic post office is a gigantic Santa Claus statue up on a hill. Built in 1935, it's 22 feet tall and 40 tons. It was the first ever Santa Claus statue in America. Right next to it is a historic church. Perpetually decorated for Christmas, it looks like something from a Hallmark movie. The museum is not free, but is not too pricey. And south of the village is Santa's Candy Castle, opened in 1935. Inside, it just feels like Christmas. It costs nothing to visit, but I'd be very surprised if you didn't buy something. Heading west across 162 takes you to one of the very best Southern Indiana free attractions, the Lincoln Boyhood Home National Memorial. Abraham Lincoln grew up here from seven years old to when he left as a 21-year-old man. Here you'll find a wonderful limestone memorial with a theater. Museum. Chapel. 
and even a post office. If you have time to walk the grounds, you'll find the grave of Abraham's mother. What's thought to be the remains of their cabin encased in bronze. Even the place where the Lincolns got their water. There's also a village that demonstrates pioneer life mid-April through September. If you hike the trails, you could spend an entire day here. And it would be time very well spent. At nearby Dale, Indiana, we find the hometown of Florence Henderson. She was the actress that played Mrs. Brady on The Brady Bunch. Born here in 1934, the town is very proud of her accomplishments. Many people in town grew up with her and knew her before she was famous. But it all started here at Dale, Indiana. The next free attraction takes a long stretch of road, but it's worth it. Located at Vincennes, Indiana, along the Wabash, is the George Rogers Clark Memorial. Dedicated to General Clark and his men that captured British Fort Sackville, it's the largest federal monument outside of Washington, D.C. Built in 1931, it houses a bronze statue of Clark, seven and a half feet tall. Including its marble pedestal, it weighs in at 12 tons. There are seven gigantic murals depicting the military campaign against the British. Each are a massive 16 feet wide and 28 feet tall. Across the courtyard is a museum. Inside are displays in a theater that plays an excellent film about General Clark. It's definitely a place worth stopping and reflecting on the sacrifices of so many. Back when I was a kid, we did road trips to enjoy each other's company, see something different, and experience the world outside our little town. Fun didn't take a lot of money, just a tank of gas and a map to plan your stops. But at the end of a long trip, you were left with something that money can't buy. Memories. It's not just the things you see, but the people you meet the snacks you get at the truck stops, and all the wrong turns and misadventures along the way. Things that bring back a smile on a later rainy day. In all my years, I've never found gold at the end of a rainbow, but I've sure found treasure at the end of a road trip.